Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Stun Runner. Stun Runner is a racing shooter that was developed by Atari in 1989. In the 80s and 90s, there was a yearning for games to be as lifelike as possible. When a game like Hard Driver hit the arcades, it hit hard because it was the most lifelike driving game around. I know you may scoff, I mean, come on, hey, it's no Gran Turismo, but at the time, there was nothing else like it. It was one of the first racing games to feature 3D polygon driving and Environments and somewhat lifelike driving physics. So it was kind of a big thing back then. But there was just something missing though. The game was missing an action element. You see, the game was a simulator and gamers just wanted something a little more after the novelty wore off. You could tell this because gamers started becoming more interested in hitting cows and crashing in spectacular fashion just to see the replay of how they crash in a third person. So months later, using the same hardware and most of the same guys who created hard driving comes Stun Runner, which was all around a more exciting game, but it doesn't nearly get the attention it deserves. When you went to the arcades and saw Stun Runner, it just kind of felt like, oh, it's just another one of those 3D polygon games like hard driving and kept walking. And another thing, it was pretty expensive too. I mean, it was like a dollar and you just didn't want to take the risk. It wasn't until Daytona USA came out in the arcades that 3D polygonal games made a serious comeback and was pretty much a game changer. Now there's not much to be said about the story, so I'm just going to read it verbatim from the introduction in the operator's manual. Take a seat, grasp the control, and enter the world of the Stun Runner. Players travel ahead in time to the 21st century and experience the thrill of racing in a futuristic form of competitive driving. At the control of the state-of-the-art technology, players pilot a billion dollar vehicle capable of attaining speeds of over 900 miles per hour. And that's pretty much all there is to the story. According to gaming history, Carol Cameron proposed the idea for Stun Runner. In her original concept, there were only tunnels and you were racing against computer players as opposed to racing against the clock. Personally, I would have preferred racing against computer players. As with almost every racing game, speed is the key. But unlike other racing games, there's no foot pedal for acceleration. Faster speeds are achieved by correctly driving on the fastest portion of the tunnel staying off the side rails, avoiding collisions, avoiding construction areas, and running over boosts for hyperspeed. When you run over the boosts, which are the red flashing markers, you'll also become temporarily invincible and transparent. The control handles on the steering wheel include trigger buttons for firing, and you can move them up and down for shot elevation. You can pick up, and sometimes be awarded, shock waves, which is pretty much a kill all. If you require one of these shock waves, you can press start to activate them. Your vehicle has six shields. Colliding with enemies causes you to lose one shield. At the end of each race, players are awarded bonus points for each shield remaining and a large bonus if all your shields are intact. It's easy to get caught up in the action, so if you hear a buzzing noise kind of like an alarm, that means your time is running out. Fun fact, similar to Road Blasters, Stun Runner also had a limited time t-shirt giveaway if you reached the checkpoint in the last level. Stun Runner was ported over to the Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Atari Lynx, Atari ST, Commodore 64, and the ZX Spectrum. It was also included in the Midway Arcade Treasures 3 for the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. The best way I can describe the game is it's pretty much a combination of hard driving and road blasters. If you've never played this game before, you may get turned off on the first couple of boards, but I say don't quit there because the game is really fun when you progress further into the game. It's pretty fast paced and it doesn't feel repetitive. Stun Runner, in my opinion, was a more more polished game compared to hard driving. It looked and played better, and it was a lot more exciting. More importantly, it felt like it was a step up from the driving physics found in hard driving. Just less stiff and more suited for non-stop high-speed racing with a little bit of action thrown in. The thing is that when we think of racing games, we think of high speed, and Stun Runner would be far more influential in that respect than say hard driving would. So I say, get your safety helmet, put on those driving gloves, strap in, play this game, and let me know what you think.